Let's continue our study of carbonyl chemistry. In this webcast and in the upcoming webcast, we're going to be looking at special kinds of substitution reactions. These substitution reactions are going to be replacing the carbonyl oxygen with something else. And so, for example, in this webcast, we'll be looking at the replacement of that carbonyl oxygen with nitrogen. That nitrogen might come, for example, from a primary amine. In that case, we'll see that the oxygen of the carbonyl is substituted for that nitrogen from that primary amine. The byproduct that we have in this reaction is the loss of water, and the elements of water come from the hydrogen atoms on the primary amine, as well as the carbonyl oxygen. We'll see that the reaction takes place by an addition, where the nitrogen and one of the hydrogen atoms have added across the carbon-oxygen double bond, followed by an elimination reaction. Elimination reactions you should now be familiar with always make double bonds, and in this case we make the carbon-nitrogen double bond of the functional group that's known as the imine. And so we go from the amine to the imine by a substitution reaction at the carbonyl oxygen. Now, this assumes that we're dealing with primary amines, and there's a special variation of this reaction that takes place when the amine is secondary. In this case, and assuming that there's an alpha carbon that's sp3 hybridized with a hydrogen atom, not only does the oxygen get replaced with the nitrogen of this secondary amine, but the alpha hydrogen is lost as well. The result is this enamine functional group you can see here. The alpha carbon is positioned there, and you can see that it's lost the hydrogen atom that used to be on that carbon, and it's transformed from sp3 to sp2. This also involves an addition step. We've added the elements of amine and hydrogen from that amine across the carbon oxygen double bond, what was the carbon oxygen double bond, and then there's an elimination, but now that elimination takes place from C alpha rather than from nitrogen, and that's the key difference that we'll notice in the mechanism that we'll talk about in the following webcast. Let's take a look at two examples that illustrate specifically these two reactions. First, pay attention to the primary amine example, and then the secondary amine example. So, for example, if the primary amine is aniline, the result will be the imine that's shown here with the loss of water. These reactions are often reversible, and they're typically catalyzed by water. And so by Le Chatelier's principle, for example, we could drive this reaction to the right if the equilibrium constant isn't particularly favorable. In the case of aromatic amines, or anilines, as illustrated here, the reaction is actually thermodynamically favorable. The equilibrium constant is significantly larger than 1 due to the conjugation of that carbon-nitrogen double bond with the pi system. So those kinds of imines are actually quite stable. As far as the second kind of example goes, notice now we're dealing with a secondary amine. There are two carbon atoms bound to that nitrogen atom. We have an sp3 hybridized alpha carbon on this aldehyde that has a hydrogen available to it, and so there will be a double bond formed across this carbonyl carbon to alpha carbon bond. And that's what we see here in the imine. Notice that this reaction is also catalyzed by proton, elimination of water, and the enamine forms as you can see here. In addition to the differences between secondary amines and primary amines that you see here, I'd like to draw your attention to a variety of nitrogen-containing functional groups, in particular nitrogen-containing primary amines, that perform this kind of substitution reaction. Those are illustrated in the table on the next slide. These reagents, like hydroxylamine, hydrazine, and semicarbazid, react in the same way to replace the carbonyl oxygen with the nitrogen. First, in the case of the hydroxylamine, it's that nitrogen that's replaced to make the carbon-nitrogen double bond shown here, and when that nitrogen is attached to oxygen of a hydroxyl group, we have the oxime functional group. Hydrazine, which is the reagent that's shown here, replaces the carbonyl oxygen with that amino group. The loss of water creates the hydrazone functionality, and that has the carbon-nitrogen double bond, which is attached to this amino group. 
semicarbazid replaces the carbonyl oxygen with the amino group that's shown there to make a semicarbazone derivative, which has the structure that's shown here, so it has the carbon-nitrogen double bond and this urea portion that's attached to that nitrogen atom. In the next webcast, we'll take a look at the mechanisms by which the imine and the enamine are formed.